and I know from talking to his wife, there's healthy finances that go on there too. <laughs> so Dr. Joe, along with our presidential director, Whitney Kell, from California, that's not quite used to being called Miss and Ma'am, is going to present inquir uh, acquiring clients. So there you go, Dr. Joe again. Well, I'm honored to be able to be up here with Whitney. She, uh, Whitney and I did our first thing together at uh, one of the conventions where we did for health professionals. But, you know, I'm sitting back there and I'm looking at, I hope everyone realizes the great opportunity you have here to hear all these speakers and yeah. educating because I'm sitting back there and I didn't want to come up, but I figured I just want to listen. They're all so good. <laughs> um, so Whitney, I guess, is going to start out here. Yeah, is that Joe and I correct? are going to go back and forth and then we're going to do a little... Joe and I are going to go over there. I'll, I'll look great for you. Hello? Okay. Hey, hi, you want to what? Well, yeah, I'll start it off, and then um, we're going to do a little role playing. We're going to show you guys how we would talk to somebody about getting them started on the program. But you're going to hear me with this quote a lot because I like this. You heard it yesterday if you were in the room. In a capitalistic society, your compensation and financial security is in direct proportion to how much value you bring to the market. So how much value you're bringing to the market. Therefore, the entrepreneur that helped the most people by solving the biggest problem reap the largest rewards. And those rewards don't necessarily all need to be financial, do they? No. I, I tend to think more simply. So I just say, he who has a thing to tell and gently whispers in the well is not as apt to make the dollars as one who climbs a pole and hollows. <laughs> Everyone got that? Yeah. <laughs> I need to put that one on my slide. Yeah. Okay. So I want to start with just talking a little bit about what we're doing. You know, when I first started this, I wanted to get people. I needed to make income. This was my employment. This was my job. And when, when we first start out, I think sometimes we get confused about who we're in service to. So what I wanted to touch on just for a moment, because this is a small town, right? And the beautiful thing is you guys are about to change the population in this town. And then you got Baton Rouge to go into. I mean, just like in California, we've got several cities. You guys have a lot of growth opportunity here. Texas is border, Alabama. You got all kinds of areas. Mississippi, you guys can just keep going into different areas. So I wanted to just point out, what's the population in the United States of America? 308 million. 308 million. We know that right now, what is it? What percentage of the population needs us? About 70 percent right now, right? And that's need a lot more than half. Yeah, if we count the finances, probably 90 percent. Good point. Did, did ever, can everybody hear Joe? Yeah. Okay, great. So if you look at the population and how much opportunity we have, it makes sense to be all part of the same team. And I love that about this company. Is I feel like you know Don Marie coming from New York, they're like our cousins. Joe from Florida. I mean, that's we're one big happy family. We got. So much room to grow, so many people to help. There's no end to that. So how many people do you want to help? You get to decide what your goal is. They just did a great job of setting that up with, what's your why? I want to change the healthcare system. I want to be part of this amazing movement that we're doing right now. So you get to decide your goal, but make sure that you're clear on it so that you have that connection. And then abundance versus scarcity thinking. When I first started, you know, I really, like I said, wanted to get people. And I want to ask a question. Before you started on Take Shape for Life, how many people, raise your hand, knew about Metafast before someone introduced this to you? Okay, so about 12 people out of a room of, I don't know, how many people? Are there? Seven. Seven. So not too many people knew about this, and they still don't. I mean, you know, we're only national. What about when we get to go over and help other countries? That's coming. So we gotta start here though. So I just wanted to point out the abundance versus scarcity thinking. Um, you know, when you come into this, if you're coming across different people who have helped others, when I, we went to Pennsylvania, we got people all over the country, and I'll never forget this coach coming up to me. She's so excited, she says, 
oh my goodness, I'm going to sign up a new coach. I said, oh, you are? I'm so excited for you. And she says, yeah, they lost 60 pounds with, some, uh, with another coach, but that coach didn't tell them about the coaching opportunity. And I said, oh, so let me ask you a question. How would you feel if you worked with somebody and helped them lose 60 pounds, and then they went and were going to sign up with somebody else to be, do the business? It, does that make sense? Does that, is that okay? No, would, no. would you do that? And so remember when, when we're doing this, there's plenty of people that you can work with. And what, what she did was she, she was like, oh my gosh, you're right. And I said, the other part to that, and I've heard this several times throughout our community, is there's three parts to every story. There's your side, there's my side, and there's the truth. So would you agree that sometimes people forget or they're not listening when you're telling them about the program when you first get them in? I plant the seed to everybody about becoming a coach, but then they don't. They don't hear you. Wendy, can I just say one thing here? Because I know that sounds really integrity-based when we say it here. But when people are out there in the real world, it seems different. And, you know, my experience has been, and I'm sure you probably have the same, is that whenever people get into sort of a tiff or arguments over a, a coach, almost never does that person do anything. Right. Right. Almost never. So basically what you've done is you've introduced conflict, You've slowed yourself down, and you know the objective is to give, not to not to hoard. And almost always, well, not almost always. You know, seed time and harvest is you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. And if you give a coach, I can guarantee you, there's going to be another coach come from somewhere when you least expect it. You don't even know where they come from, and they're going to come to you. So it should be who can give the most, not who can get the most. Excellent. And in our business, do you think this is a numbers game? No. Um, if, if you talk to a certain number of people, do you think that a certain number of those people will decide to get started yeah. with you? Yeah. So what if, what if we all said, look, conference is coming, there's an event coming, I'm going to talk to 100 people. What if we all made that commitment? Do you think we'd be able to touch a lot of lives? Yeah. So what if that was your commitment? And I'm not telling you it needs to be, but... If you can sit down and talk to your business coach and set a commitment for the number of lives that you want to touch and go beyond, stretch yourself a little bit. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the day. You know, make, get your goals up there so that they're a little uncomfortable. Every time you step out of your comfort zone, you're going to grow and learn. Any additions to that? Well, how many people are from Lafayette in the room here? Okay, so oh. basically a handful. Now, I, I looked up last night the population statistics for Lafayette. 2010 was 120,000 people. Okay. So that means, going by the other statistics, about 72,000 are overweight or obese. So there's going to be about 36,000 obese ones. So even if half of those got on the program, that's 15,000. Now, do you think the number of people in here who raised their hands can coach 15,000 people? No. So you don't even need to fight over one. Nice. Great. Nice. Value. How many people have bought a car? Did you enjoy the process? Keep your hands raised. Really. Do you know what it feels like to be sold? I was in sales, and I know what that meant. That meant I didn't care what they wanted. I was going to sell them what I had to sell. I needed to get that out of my hands into theirs. That was the goal. What I've shifted into, and this is when my business really started to take off, is asking people what they wanted. How many people have been asked that throughout your life? What do you want? What are your dreams? What are your goals? Most people don't ever get that question. So adding service and adding value versus trying to sell somebody on this opportunity, it's not a fit for everyone, right? We right. would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So making sure that you're asking questions, learning about what that person wants, and adding value. I'll go in just to meet people whenever I'm going out and cold calling. I happen to like cold calling. Not everybody likes to do that. But my intention when I go out, I set one, is to have fun and give that person a gift. Because I believe we are sitting on a gold mine here. I believe that I have something to offer. I've lost nine pounds, so what? But I know you're supposed to eat every three hours. I know if they drink half their body weight in ounces of water, they're gonna feel better. I know so many different things because of this education, and I'm happy, free to give it away. I know how to do structural tension. So rather than going right into the 501, I can teach someone about creating their goals or getting what they want. Now, it's important, too, to recognize that don't let there be confusion because Greg gets up here and says, what do you want? 
And then Whitney comes up here and says, ask them what they want. Okay. And it is important to recognize that there's, uh, there's a structure there. You know, you may want a house, but it doesn't matter to you what kind of hammer, whether it's uh, one of those jamming hammers or a hand hammer, the, the contractor uses. Okay. So it's important that you know what you want but it's equally important that you ask others what they want. Because how many have heard, I guess Zig Ziglar is credited with this, that uh, you know, if you help enough other people get what they want, you automatically get what you want. Yeah. So that's really the principle we're talking about here. It's not, well, is it me or is it them? It's both. Right. And that's what Whitney was talking about, the abundance versus the scarcity mentality. Because everyone can have what they want. They just have to choose it. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, sorting and being attractive, you know, that I talked about this yesterday. I only had nine, nine pounds to lose, but what I need to do is grow as a person. Have you ever met people that you just don't like? You think you're going to have some of those people a part of our business? Do you think that it's a great opportunity for you to learn about yourself through what it is that they're showing up in your life? And because if you want to help hundreds or thousands or maybe millions of people, doesn't it make sense that you learn how to work with and how to find things about that person that you like? What do you love about them? Yeah, you got a list of things you don't, but what if you, what if you could find a few things you do? So for me, becoming more attractive, liking myself better, um, the gal who came up and did her structural tension, which was great, talked a little bit about self-esteem. That was my biggest challenge because there were things I didn't like about so many people because I didn't like them about myself. So as I grew, as I got in this immersion of our learning and training and growing and getting to hear different speakers and hearing from their lessons in life, I've gotten to grow. I've gotten to become more attractive, so more people want to work with me, and I want to work with different people. That opens and expands our opportunity. So it's attraction versus selling. Anything to add to that? I don't think so. I think okay. this, you're, you're moving right into the next thing, right? Which well, is no, no, back up. This is our, but one more. Sorry, I okay. put the slides together. Who's well, your audience? And then War Market, that's how we were going to go into doing the role playing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where where did the 80 20 come in? That's the next one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's the next one. Yeah, it is. Okay, so let's, let's start here. And do you want to do the role playing? Do you want to kick it off? Sure. Excellent. Okay, now. Uh, we know that the, the basic natural resource in this business is people, right? We agree with that. Now, is there anyone in here who has difficulty or challenges in, um, in, getting, in, in introducing this to clients, in finding clients? Be honest now. Okay. Keep your hands up, please, for a second. We're, we're amongst friends. Now, who is willing of you to maybe be a little bit of a guinea pig up here to help everybody, including yourself. Get out of your yourself. comfort zone. Yeah, stretch okay, and grow. And let's, let's have an agreement. Joe made a really good point. We're, we are all here to learn and grow together. So let's, be, let's get out of our minds, let's get into our hearts, and let's support each other as we go through this process, okay? And make sure you take notes. Because right. you never know who you're going to come across who needs this information. This is your okay. okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to spend a few minutes here doing an example. So Whitney and I, we're sitting at Starbucks and we're just okay. talking, we're chatting. And Frances is sitting there with somebody else or she's doing some work and she hears Whitney say to me, oh, you know, I can't believe we're going on this cruise in a couple of weeks and, you know, how am I going to get off this 30 pounds? I can't fit any of my clothes. I don't want to be in a bathing suit. So do you say anything and if so, what? Hi, I'm Francis, and I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but... Okay, I'm... stop right there. Now, what Francis did was something very important. Okay, two things. Now, there's, uh, there are things called communication softeners. Okay, and soften, the word soften, S-O-F-T-E-N, is the acronym for that. And it's smile, which she did, open posture, uh, the F is forward lean, T is touch, which is the handshake. The E is the eye contact. And then as they start talking, you'll notice that she'll be nodding as she's talking. And these are all communication softeners. And you see, Francis did that naturally. Mm -hmm. So we know she's from this area because <laughs> you guys are all friendly. You're not from the Northeast. And is not. What's the H? 
Can there go. is no itch and stop. It's, it's smile, open posture. Okay, you're not like this. Forward lean. You want to hear what the other person's saying. Touch, which is usually going to be a handshake. The E is the eye contact. And the N is the nodding. Okay. So you introduced yourself to Whitney. Hi. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I... Overheard you say you're going on a cruise? No, I'm excited. Where are you going, Randy? No, I'm sorry. The Caribbean. Wow, the Caribbean. I haven't been there yet. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you said you need to drop about 30 pounds? Yes. Okay. I have got something that I'd really like to share with you, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. Now, something critical she did here was she asked Whitney. She didn't stop with, I have something for you. She says, I have it to share if you want to. Okay, so go ahead. At least I'm doing everything right. You are. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And bear in mind that there's, there's not a right or a wrong, but you have to think about what you're doing and how you're treating people and what you want and what they want, most important. Okay. Um, I just wanted to share my story. I recently was facing an eighth back surgery, and it was due solely because of me being overweight. And I started a program where I have lost 70 pounds wow. since May of oh, this year. Gosh. Congratulations. Oh, well, thanks. And everything is wonderful for me, and I just want to share it with other people. I started with my weight for 26 years. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop her here for a second, because I think that it's too much you right now. Yeah. Yeah. You've told her your story. You want to share it. Really, what she needs to do is she needs to find out what Whitney wants, and if Whitney really wants to lose that 30 pounds. Okay. okay. Because we don't, you know, she can get to that, what her story is, but suppose Whitney's just chatting, like so many people do, yeah, I need to lose 30 pounds. Are you serious? Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. sometime. Mm -hmm. Why waste your time? Yeah. Well, one other thing, I'd like to see your picture. And immediately pull out that picture you show me. You don't need to say another word. Yeah. That'll just hammer me. I'm like, oh my gosh, give me that. I want to do it. And, and in fact, if she has that, she doesn't even have to say much. She can just say, Can I show this you? Can I show you a picture? Can I show you a picture? Which I do have, by the way. And then she whips out the picture and says, This was me. And then stops. Because what's the first thing Whitney's gonna say? Ow. How did you do that? Wow. Right? Wow. That's what we get is wow. we get wows in this business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Love it. Right? We do. <laughs> and then, you know, it's real important that we back off and see what Whitney's going to say. Find out what Whitney wants. Work on that. Really, what does Whitney want? Are you serious? Whitney says, wow, and then I would just not say anything. And then Whitney's going to ask some questions to her. How did you do it? Okay. okay? So these are, these are critical things because... It's so important that we, we get so excited we want to tell our story. And there will be a time for that. Okay? But remember, two ears, one mouth. And, and what I tell people is this. You know, you had, you had no problem putting things into your mouth for so long. Okay? <laughs> now what you need to do is let just a little bit come out, but not too much. Let's move on a little bit so people can see us. <clears throat> What's the next exercise that you'd like to do? Well, we only have 10 minutes left, so let's do this with coaches. Does anyone have... Give her a hand. Yes, thank you. Anybody have a difficulty acquiring coaches or converting clients to coaches? How about that? Everybody. Come on up. Come on down. Uh, that was the Baptist way of raising your hand. It's like this. Yeah. You're kind of like this, right? Lisa. Okay, Lisa. Now, Whitney. That's you. Okay, Whitney has been your client now for a month well, and a half. Okay. Month and a half. Okay. It's mid November. So I've lost probably anywhere from 12 to 18 pounds. Yeah. I'm on my way. Or if she's a heavy guy, she might have lost 25 or 30. But I'm a woman. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three months she's been on the road. Okay, okay. So, let's, let's, let's so we'll say 30, 30 pounds. Okay. okay. Perfect. So we're just going to quickly go through week one, 
week two, and then up to now. Now, have you introduced this business at all to Whitney up to this point? And if so, if so, what? And if not, why not? Okay, we're in week one. Week one. Okay, week one. I'm just interested in. Hold the mic up, Betsy, please. Okay, in week one, no, I'm talking to Whitney three or four times, seeing how she's doing, getting her accustomed, getting her to start reading Habits of Health. Did you plant the seed in the beginning? I didn't plant the seed yet. Okay. <laughs> how many people are planting the seed right off the bat about Very the coaching question. opportunity? How many people think if you plant that seed, it could grow later? Yeah. Oh, yes. If you okay. water it? So that, I, I think that's one area of, of great improvement. Start okay. at the very beginning. And we call, we call that dripping on people. Okay. You know, I don't know if any of you have ever been little kids and played in the sand, and where you get this sort of wet sand, and little by little, you just keep dropping it, and before you know it, you've got yourself a beautiful sand castle. Well, that's what this is. Okay. You know, you're not going to give her a full seminar on $70,000 a month, but what you want to do is you want to say, well, this is how I do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Whitney... You are a beautiful woman. And you know, when you get that 30 pounds off, you're going to be so excited. You're going to be able to help so many people get healthy, just like you're getting it. So can I share how I do it? Hey, Lisa. Hey. Um, so great. I'm so excited to support you through this process of getting you healthy. And I just want to know, is there anybody who might want to start this with you? Yes, I have a sister that wants to lose some weight. Oh, fantastic. Because what we found is that the more people you have around you that are doing this, the stronger the community is that you can develop so that while we go through this journey, because it's a journey, you'll have more people on that journey with you to support that process. And I just want to plant the seed. Um, if you like the way that we work together and people start to notice that you're getting healthy and other friends and family ask you about this, there's two things that you can do. One is you can refer them to me. I will give you a $10 credit, and I actually match it. The company gives a $10 credit. I'll give you a $20 credit on your account towards your next order for anyone you refer to me. So if, you're, if your sister wants to get on it with you, right. um, then you can refer her to me. Okay. But I want you to pay attention as we go through this process together. If you like this, if you enjoy what we're doing, I do this full time as a business. And what we found is that the people who become part of our group, part of our network, who coach other people and pay forward their success, have longer term success. Just think about it. Let's focus on you for now. But I want you to know that that's an option. You sound like a great lady. Let's focus on your health. What can I do to help you get started? Now, one of the other presidential teams has just started using this new approach. Okay, since we have the statistics now that a coach is five times more likely to keep the weight off, very first day they'll say, okay, you know what? When people start noticing, that'll be the time that we're going to cement your success at a deeper level, mm -hmm. and that'll be when we start helping you share this with other people because that'll increase by 500% the likelihood that you keep your weight off. Wow. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, so we're in week three now. How much time do we have? Five? Okay, so we're in week three now. And do you say anything to it? Let's say you've already started dripping on it a little bit. You did mention it. Okay, so now it's week three. So we can assume she's probably lost, you know, somewhere between six and ten pounds or so. So, Whitney, you, you've lost how much now? Six and ten pounds. Between six and ten pounds, you're doing great. <laughs> Are people starting to notice? Yeah, you know, a couple people have. They've asked me um, really? what I'm doing. They've made comments about how, how good I look. Really? Yeah. Are you telling them how easy this program is? Yeah, no. Um, I, I've only talked to a couple people about it. I'm, I'm waiting until I lose about ten more pounds before I really start sharing. Well, the reason I'm asking is because... What I do is I offer my clients a, a, you know, an incentive refer, a referral incentive. If they send to me someone that signs up, they get twenty dollars off their next food order. And, well, I can and, use that. Yeah. Okay. Now this is another point of what we talked about before. What you're doing is you're telling her what you do okay. instead of letting her know or asking her. Do you know, Whitney, that you can get a ten dollar credit if you if you refer this program to someone and then. One of your friends can get healthy with you. And in fact, as many as you said, did you know that we, we'll do that for you? Do you like the way you feel, Lisa, on the program? That's, this is one way I do it. Do you like okay. the way you feel? Yes, I do. I Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad. Do, is there anybody else that you think might want to feel the way you feel? Absolutely. Well, the company's going to give you 20 bucks if you refer someone to me, and that would go towards your next food order. Maybe I could come into your office and do a tasting. Are there any girls at the office who might Absolutely. want to try this? Okay. Can we schedule a time? So you see, she's asking. Okay. She's not telling. 
and, and that's that's really critical because you know when you when you keep telling people they feel like they're in school and what do people do they run away from school if they think you're trying to if they think you're hunting for them <laughs> what are they going to do hide they want to escape <laughs> okay if they think you care about them you know this is sort of a different topic but what i say is the devil pushes but god pulls okay and so negative sort of pushes people but you know, drawing them in. You want to draw them in. You want them to know that you care. Mm -hmm. And as cliche as it is, nobody does care how much you know until they know how much you care. Let's give Lisa a hand. Thank you so much. I want to just talk just for a moment about one of the main tools that I use now because we didn't have a Habits of Health book. Did you know that? Not until two years ago. So what's a picture worth? A thousand words. This is the picture I use. Dr. An or I've only lost nine pounds. Who cares, right? But Greg has lost and is on page 145. And now, does everybody in the room feel like you're friends with Greg? Yeah. You all feel like he's, you know, somebody who you can connect with and you could share? One of my friends lost 50 pounds in 10 weeks. He's in this book. And on the left, right-hand side, it talks about the glucose insulin response. So I open with this. I have this book with me on airplanes everywhere I go. If I walk into an office or I'm going to go in and talk to somebody about whatever's going on with them, I got the book in my purse, I whip it out, and I'll start talking. That when the opportunity arises, I'll say, look what my sweetheart was able to accomplish. And then I talk about how the glucose insulin response works, and I say, have you ever heard you're supposed to eat every three hours? Do you ever eat breakfast? Do you eat breakfast every day? Have you heard that breakfast is the most important? Who, who said breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Mama. Everyone knows that saying. Most people, do they eat breakfast? No. Are you given a gift yes. by reminding yes. them? What if you could get up in the morning and just have a quick shake? Something that just gives your body a, a metabolism kick. So use you your pictures. Quick shake. Quick shake. <laughs> the second tool, I love the BMI chart. And I don't have one handy, but that BMI chart is powerful. Everybody using the BMI chart? Yep. Help people get clear on their current reality. <coughs> and um, Pat and Stan did an outstanding job of going over the optimal health um, program. And I don't know if you realize this, but I ask people sometimes, do you have a body fat analyzer at home? And if they say no, I say, well, a very simple one is get naked in front of the mirror and jump up and down. <laughs> Okay, now, let's say, okay, you're introducing this program to someone, right? And they know, you show them this, and they know they're either somewhere in the red or they're way off. And you ask them, how much weight would you like to lose? And say they weigh 300 pounds, and they're five foot six, and they say, you say, how much would you like to weigh? And they say, 200. Now, if they're in the red, what do you say? It's a good start. Okay, great, let's talk Good start, start. Right. great, okay, let's, let's, let's shoot for that. Okay. I asked them, when was the last time you were there? When was the last time in your life that you were at that weight? Great. Things are a little different now, right? So we need to you know, take it one step. And then what I like to do is I like to find out what they really want. Because what I'll say is this. I'll say, I, I know that's, that's a great start. But if you were able to go to sleep tonight and wake up in the morning at the perfect weight, the weight that you'd love to be, what would that weight be? And then I know sort of long term where they want to go. Because a lot of people think, well, I could never get below 200, but I'd really like to weigh 160. Yeah, great. That's, that's awesome. So just in closing, is growing any business a numbers game, would you guys say? Yeah. yeah. So why is that? Why, why is growing a business a numbers game? Because you're building relationships, maybe? Because sometimes people don't get things because it takes a while. For those of you who are in the room, we hope when we come back next year, you guys will all bring someone with you. But we also know that the concepts that Greg talked about sometimes pull us back. I did want to give up dozens of times. But I'm standing here because I stepped forward instead of backwards. So I challenge everybody in the room to, every time you hit a, hit a roadblock, get with your coach and try to move past that. Because this is a numbers game. So the numbers of people that you talk to, and I'm going to let Joe do the 80-20 the rule. Okay, so the 80-20 rule is basically this. Is that if you talk to 100 people, 20% should get on program. And okay. what will the other percentage say? No, sell a 
upgrade the nose because you know if you right. keep asking, you're going to get to those 20%. And remember that every contact you have with the person is success because really what you're doing is you're trying to determine whether or not the fit is right. right. And if the fit is not right, then that was a successful encounter. It's not, oh, well, I, you know, that one didn't work. Now, the other thing is that you'll find that 20% of the people will do 80% of the work, and that works in everything. If you own a t-shirt company, 20% of the designs are going to get 80% of the profits for you. So we, we're at our negative time now. So. Yes, we are. So great achievement is usually born of great sacrifice, and it is never the result of selfishness. So be in service, and when you're in service of someone else's needs, I will tell you, the law of reciprocity, you're, it, what goes around comes around, right? Yep. yep. So share this with as many people as you can. Celebrate the no's and continue to share this with other people until sometimes those no's come yeah. around and are yeses, right? Yeah. yeah. If, if you want to get 100 yeses, go out there and look for 500 no's. Nice. I like it. Thanks, you guys.